Good morning, yourself. It is so good to be with you today. Hey, isn't technology absolutely amazing? Thank God for technology. Uh, strange times uh, we are in with uh, this kind of lockdown. In fact, uh, the whole world is a lockdown. Right? And I, I think every one of us is asking the question, God, what are you saying to us? And so I want to unpack that a little bit uh, this morning. All right. And I uh, just want to say a big thank you to Pastor Shannon and uh, Samir and uh, the leadership for giving me this great opportunity just to be able to connect with you guys. Thank thank God that he's brought about such a bonding in our hearts, uh, you know, one for another. You know, new life, covenant blessings. We're still one uh, part of this big, big family of uh, our God. Just a few things to just kind of say. One pastor called me up and said, hey, last night I went to, went to bed at 1.30 in the morning. I said, 1.30? What were you doing? He says, washing vessels. Oh, flip. And, you know, just kind of looking at, at uh, stuff to do in the house. Uh, you know, we are only two of us, Kathy and myself. Uh, our children and grandchildren are in America. And uh, you go through the day and there's kind of, washing of vessels and the drying of clothes and uh, I must say I, I, I can really do a good sweep yeah so sweeping of the house and Kathy comes after me swabbing and uh, it's, it's, it's fun uh, but it's a lot of work and then of course there's a cooking and then there's a cleaning after that again uh, I had another pastor who, who called me up and uh, he said uh, you better pray for me I said uh, what's wrong he said uh, three children all right and so again um, Fascinating times of, of just being with family and I'll come to that in a minute as, as we go along. And I think uh, in the midst of our, this kind of lockdown, for you as a church and uh, for even us uh, beyond the Utsav, there's an inevitable sadness. And I think it's mixed with gratitude. There is grief, but it's also pleasure. Because we really experienced firsthand what Farah meant to us and how her life actually touched us. I think some of us may be still searching for answers this morning. And I just want to say to you, that's all right. I want to say to you that, that and encourage you, ask the questions. It's natural to be able to wonder why this had to happen. I don't think Farah was planning to die when she did. You begin to look at life and life is like a vapor that appears for a little while and then passes away. And it just seemed like it was Farah's time to go. And friends, none of us actually know what's going to happen to us. Our lives are really fragile, aren't they? And I hope that this verse I'm going to share with you will, will bring you some comfort. It's, it's from Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 1 in the New Living Translation, the NLT. Good people pass away. The godly often die before their time. But no one seems to care or to wonder why. No one seems to understand that God is protecting them from the evil to come. And so our prayer to God as we remember you and remember uh, our dear Pastor Shannon and Anais is that, that God would just come in a way that only He can with His comforting presence. And uh, as I bring to you His word this morning, I'm praying great peace over you. 31st of December 19, uh, 2019. For the last 12 years, uh, the Lord has blessed me with a word for our church. And year after year, we've seen God come and, and uh, uh, in, in response to our faith, in response to taking those steps, in response to our action, he's just stepped in and we've seen breakthrough upon breakthrough by the word that he has spoken. And in the last three or four years, I felt the Lord actually give me the permission to take this word beyond our churches. And uh, uh, I was to be with you on the 26th of January and unfortunately that didn't happen. And this was the word that I was going to bring to you. So, so here goes five things that I felt the Lord say to me at the, the, the beginning of this year. Thanksgiving service, 31st of December, right in the night, coming into the first morning. This is what he said to 
uh, to us as a church. Five things. Number one, that this would be a year of redemption. And number two, that this would be a year of restructuring. And number three, that this would be a year of awakening and acceleration. And number four, that this would be a year of unprecedented growth. And number five, that this would be a year of discipleship. And wow, I mean, it's just four months into the word that has come to us. And I look back and I say, God, I had no clue because we know in part we prophesy in part. I had no clue that this would actually unpack. Talk about restructuring and we'll, we'll go into that uh, as we go along. It's just very, very fascinating. And so let me just look at the year of redemption. I believe the Lord told me three things. Number one, that we will receive back what we have lost. Number two, that the past wrongs will be corrected. And number three, that we would have access to things that uh, we've not had. And so number one, receiving back what we have lost. Um, I believe, and this is what I felt the Lord say, that revival is designed to start in families. And hey, when you look at this lockdown, we have a gift of unexpected time. And uh, with our families, with our children, all right, um, you're, you're, you're looking at the deeper connection with parents. Uh, times of fun. I think there are times where memories are going to be made and good stories are going to be passed from generation to generation. All right, there's a great awakening that is taking place in our home. Families reconnecting and uh, parents having uh, an opportunity to 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 um, sow into the lives of their children uh, to bring about a defined definition of what prayer means and what worship means in the family. I believe that we're going to see prodigals returning uh, because of this. We're going to see Acts 2, houses of hope and uh, houses of miracles and healings and deliverance and restorations. Uh, I believe that's what's going to happen in your home. Will you repeat after me this morning? My home will be a house of restoration. My home will be a home of healing. My house will be a house of deliverance. And I believe that during this time, we are going to see a lot uh, of, of giving and receiving of forgiveness. All right. And secondly, I believe there's going to be a, a, a correcting of a past wrong. And uh, in this, I, I just felt the whole story of Mordecai in the book of Esther. And, and you know, you, you begin to kind of look at the fact that I felt God saying when things are falling apart, they're actually falling together. You look at Mordecai and he's got a few hours to live. Haman has prepared for him these gallows, 75 feet high. And he's, he's going to be hung first thing in the morning. But that night, that night, the king cannot sleep. And he, he calls his attendant and says, hey, read out to me from one of the scrolls. Now, just to give you a little background of what actually happened during that time. Um, every week. We are told by some historians that about a hundred scrolls were written across the kingdom. And uh, in chapter 2, it tells us a story about how Mordecai overheard two of the servants of the king planning to assassinate him. And he went and told Esther, who told the king, and when they investigated, found it to be true, the two servants were um, uh, executed. Now, chapter 2, chapter 5, all right. The gallows are now prepared for Mordecai. And in my mind, it almost feels like, you know, it had just kind of happened. But when I look back uh, at, at history and look back at, uh, as I study this, I begin to understand that it's at least five years difference. So think with me, 100 scrolls a week into 52, into five years. That's a lot of scrolls. And the servant goes and picks up that scroll of that incident that happened five years ago. And he begins to read. And uh, the rest is history. If you don't know the story, I want to suggest you go home, pick it up, read your Bibles. Because you can see when everything was falling apart from Mordecai, just in a few hours time, it all falls together. And we know about Joseph being elevated. We know about Daniel being elevated. Do you know that Mordecai was the third guy to be elevated to the post of our modern day prime minister? Just amazing. All right. 
Another thing that came to my mind, I, I don't know where I read this, but when you think you are being buried, you're actually being planted. I right, think with me, sometimes life is such that, that, that you are confined, it's all dark around you, you know, you really don't know what's kind of happening to you. But I want to encourage you and say to you, you're not being buried, you're just being planted. Why? Because you have a seed within you, which is imperishable. And that's kind of growing and that's pushing to the surface and it's growing and it's coming up. And you know what? It's going to bear much fruit. And so I believe that, that God wants to bring and correct to us a past wrong. And I, I want to also say to you that do not settle for less. Do not settle for less because God just wants to bless you. In December uh, last year, Kathy and I went to visit our children and grandchildren for Christmas uh, in, in California. And uh, Jeremiah's son came and he picked us up from uh, San Fran Airport and to drive us to Reading. And it's about a four and a half hour drive. And uh, we are sitting and we're just absolutely delighted and full of joy and to, to kind of see him. And, and we're just kind of laughing and talking. And then as we go along in the journey, uh, you know, um, he begins to talk to me. And, 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 and uh, tell me something in Hindi and then sing a, a song. And uh, uh, for, I, as he's talking to me, I, I, think, I think to myself, has God written a song? God's my son-in-law, he's quite a joker. And, uh, you know, has he written a song? And, uh, and then, uh, you know, Jeremiah is telling me he's singing it, he's laughing and it sounds kind of Bollywood type. And, you know, if you know me, me and Bollywood don't really get on together too well. And so anyhow, uh, when we reach, um, Reading, I, I, I go onto the net, I go onto YouTube and uh, I look at this song and actually it's from a Bollywood film. And uh, it, 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 it goes like this. Oh, when you're getting gold, uh, why go for Tamba? And so like, you know, this, this kind of thing. And I'm thinking like, what's the matter with you, Jeremiah? I mean, what are you singing? Anyhow, uh, we go on in, the, in, in our trip and uh, about 10 days later, I'm awake at about three o'clock in the morning and uh, I'm praying and I'm reading uh, the word and uh, uh, everybody's asleep. Uh, Kathy's one room, Jeremiah another room, Liz and God another room, children are there. And, and, uh, and I'm sitting there and, uh, and uh, uh, I'm reading and I'm praying and you know what's happening? In my mind, uh, this is what's happening. When you're getting gold, why go for tamba? And I'm like, get away. All right. I'm sure this must be happening to you sometimes. And I'm, I'm saying, come on, get away. Lord Jesus, please help me. Uh, you know, I, I want to concentrate on your word. I want to pray. And then uh, suddenly uh, uh, the Lord says to me, Bollywood has got something that you haven't got yet. And I look at the Lord and say, Lord, what, what, what are you saying to me? And uh, the Lord said to me, when you are getting gold, why are you settling for copper? And you know, the joy of the Lord just struck, just hit me and I began to laugh and laugh. I mean, there were tears running down my cheeks. I was just laughing so much that Jeremiah woke up from sleep and said, hey, Pa, what's, what, what's wrong? Why are you laughing so much? And I was just laughing and laughing and laughing. And, and this just came home to me, you know, do not settle for less. Do not settle for less. And, and, and thirdly, I want to say that God wants to bring us in this year of redemption. He wants to bring us into uh, access uh, for something that we've never had before. I think it's a time for new opportunities. I believe that you're going to see signs and wonders and miracles. Some of you are going to see the multiplication of food. Miracles like never before. And I want to encourage you, stand boldly and declare. Because you're going to see some turnaround experiences. Because you are not a victim. You are powerful. All right, there's always a solution. You are born to win. And I believe that with this year of um, redemption, there's also a year of restructuring. And God once says, he, he spoke to me. He dropped this into my heart. He said, I want you to move on from being a firefighter to a fire lighter. You know, a firefighter is somebody who's just kind of uh, reacting and running around and, 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 and very pastoral. And, and pastoral is good. Don't get me wrong. But it shouldn't be the only thing. You know, uh, firefighters are kind of reactive. I believe God wants us to be firelighters. He wants to take, He wants us to take the fire of the Holy Spirit with us. And He wants us to go light fires. He wants us to be strategic. He wants us to plan ahead, be ahead of the game, uh, to be proactive, uh, for there to be an intentional, uh, building. You know, I, I believe that's what He wants us to do. And I believe this lockdown is telling us one thing, that it's every member mobilization. All right. Not just a few. But every member mobilization. And thirdly, um, 
I want to look at the fact that God's saying that um, this is a year of unprecedented uh, harvest. I believe it's an igniting point for a massive healing revival that's going to take place and uh, growth across our churches. You know, Genesis 50 verse 20, we often focus only on the first part of that verse. I want to read out the other part, the latter half of the verse because I believe this is for us. And uh, uh, Joseph says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is being done now. And this is what I want to say to you, the saving of many lives. And I believe that's what is in store for us. And with that, I want to bring the fourth point, which is a year of awakening and acceleration. I believe that God wants to awaken something from deep within us. You know, he's, he's, he's asking us to, to come back to a time of focus to asking us to sit down and actually to ask ourselves, what are we doing and what do you want me to do, Lord? That's what he's asking us. And I want to encourage you to go back to the time when you first met Jesus. For me, it was 45 years ago. I can remember like yesterday where I was, where I knelt down, where I accepted Jesus. And as I accepted it in my heart, he filled me with his Holy Spirit. And I spoke one th in tongues for the first time, 15th of November, 1974. That's, that's for me. And I remember what I began to do at that time. I remember just digging into the scripture as a young lad. And I want to encourage you, go back to that, to, to that, to that point and, and say to God, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm available. Be present and posture your heart so that you would be able to receive from him. I want to encourage you and say to you that if you don't appreciate what he's doing for you in the present today, you will not be able to appreciate the breakthroughs that he wants to bring to you in the future. And so uh, I want to encourage you, let people see hope through your life. Let them see hope through your communication, whether it's on the telephone, whether it's on WhatsApp messages, when it's when you open the door uh, for uh, to, to, to give the garbage. Let people see hope within you. All right. And lastly, I want to say that this is the year of discipleship. All right. This is the year of discipleship. And, uh, uh, you know, I've been looking at this and, 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 and thinking to myself, actually, Christianity without discipleship is Christianity without Christ. All right. And uh, as a learner of Jesus, um, I cannot be an apprentice of Jesus. I cannot be a disciple by accident. If I'm not being intentionally discipled by Jesus and by the people he has given me around me, then I will be unintentionally discipled. By the word. And hey, just to say to you, you cannot become a disciple of Jesus from a distance. You can see from afar, you can hear from afar, but if you want to taste, you have to come close. All right. Man shall not live by every by, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I live because he speaks. And I want to encourage you as I close this morning. Just by repeating those five things. A year of redemption, number one. A year of restructuring, number two. A year of awakening and acceleration, number three. A year of unprecedented growth, number four. And a year of discipleship, number five. And so maybe you want to take one of those points and you just want to ask God, where am I in this? What are those things that I'm feeling are falling apart? Where is it that I'm really feeling buried? God, what are you saying to me? In what are those things that I have settled for less? Where is it that my soul needs to be awakened? And my soul needs to come into submission of, of my spirit. Where is it that I need to fall in love with Jesus all over again? I believe he wants to get your attention, but he's also looking for your affection. I we quit for you to just say to Jesus this morning, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Let me say that he's made all the difference in my life. I love Jesus. And then watch out for unprecedented growth. For this opportunity is just be able to share life and share hope with people. And then ask yourself, am I being discipled? But also ask yourself, who am I discipling? 
in life. Remember, you don't have to be perfect to disciple people. You just have to be a little way down the road, a little further than them. Just picture a ladder. If you're on the third rung, all right, you have your discipler on the seventh rung, but you have somebody who's just about climbing the first rung. Your discipler disciples you, but you can be a discipler, somebody who's just on the first rung. And you can say to them, hey, come on, follow me. And you know what will really help you because they are going to catch up. And so you better then keep moving. All right. So just want to kind of encourage you. Ask yourself as I close this morning, just a few more questions. What's my purpose in your kingdom, God? What's your will for me at this time? What are you saying to me at this time? And I want to encourage you, take some time off. Take a pen, take some paper, pen it down. All right. What's your plan for me? Well, Lord, Lord, why did you redeem me? All right. And how can I respond to this call today. As I close, let me just say to you that you are a person of his affection. And so soak in heaven's love this morning. Begin to feel his presence. Let it flood your being. He fully accepts you just as you are. And in seeing that, in being able to receive that love, begin to see God's pleasure in other people. May God bless you abundantly. As we close in prayer this morning, maybe you have somebody of your family with you. Just grab a hand and pray with them. All right. As I just leave a blessing of God Almighty upon you. May God be with you. and May his face shine upon you. And may you be at a, peace of, uh, at a place of such peace and such rest because he has promised I will never leave you, nor forsake you.